Hello and welcome to game 82 of TCC's 15 Super Final, played between Lila Chess Zero and Stockfish. In this game, Lila is white and they play the King's Indian defense with d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, and now e4. White wants to play e5 and push that knight back, so black plays here d6. And now with f3, we have the Zamish variation of the King's Indian defense, which is one of the most aggressive and in the same time most solid approaches for white to counter black's setup. With f3, white's ideas are to castle long and then attack the black king with g4 and h4. And with f3, white is also solidifying his center, offering black less counterplay on the king side. Even the mighty Fisher had problems with the Zamish variation of the King's Indian. He loved playing the King's Indian defense, but against the Zamish he had quite a lot of problems and quite a lot of losses. After f3, the game continued with castles, and now we have bishop e3. And in this position, black's main ideas are attacking white's center with c5 and e5. In this game we have e5, and here white has many options. He could maintain the tension in the center by playing knight e2. But the more promising move is d5. And this is also the move that Stockfish chose to play here. This, uh, after e5, the book was ended. The game continued with c6, queen d2. And now Stockfish chose to take on d5. And Lila replied with c takes on d5. Taking with the other pawn is not good, because after e4, black gets a lot of counterplay. His bishop comes alive on this diagonal, and black also has the e5 square for himself. One of those knights could occupy it. So, after c takes on d5, Lila chose to recapture the c pawn, and now Stockfish played knight a6. Knight d7 is also good, but here we have knight a6. And now, sniping off that knight with the bishop is not such a great idea if white wants to castle long because after b takes and long castle the b file opens up for the rook and he has a direct threat against the white king so after knight a6 instead of taking lila chose to attack the black king with g4 and after knight c5 she played h4 she wants to attack stockfish with h5 and then take on g6 and then made the black king on the open h file or if after h5 stockfish would take then play g5 push this knight back and then come with the king to the h file take the pawn on h5 and mate on h7 but stockfish countered lila's plan very nicely with h5 putting a lot of pressure on the g4 pawn now he attacks that pawn with the pawn, with the knight, and with the bishop, basically forcing Lila to solve the tension between those pawns. And taking on h5 is not good, because after knight h5, white's attack is uh, kind of paralyzed. The knight sits very nicely on uh, h5, it's very hard to drive him away from there. And white can get in h5, and black also has the f4 square. And if white ever plays f4, then the pawn takes, and the bishop comes to e5, and the bishop come, becomes a, a monster from e5. And black would be much better. So after h5, Lila was pretty much forced to play g5 and close down the king side. Stockfish now went back with the knight, and Lila decided to continue with b4 and drive the knight also back home. And after knight d7, she played knight h3. This knight is going to d3, where it will stay much better than it would on e2. d4 and f4 are both unavailable. Going to g3 now doesn't make much sense, because the king side is closed. And c3 already has a knight on it, so the, the knight would stay much better on d3. And now Stockfish played a5. He really wants this knight back to c5, so he wants to get rid 
of the b4 pawn and maintaining a pawn on b4 is not possible because after a3 stockfish could take and this rook would be hanging on a1 so after a5 Lila was pretty much forced to play b5 and allow this knight back to c5 taking out this knight is not good because after d takes on c5 this knight gains the d6 square and from there it would block the d5 pawn and it would attack c4 and d4 and even b5 and black would just stand much better if Lila could get in here d6 to disallow this knight to, to get to d6 then she would stay very well but both the queen and the knight are guarding d6 so this is not possible so instead of taking the knight she continued with knight f2 and after king h7 bishop e2 and b6 Lila now played knight d3 and stockfish attacked the e4 pawn with f5 rook f1 Lila prepares for the opening of the f file rook f7 and now long castle this king stays very well on the queen side black is very solid on the queen side but he doesn't really have attacking potential there so the king is very safe rook b7 king b1 bishop d7 knight b2 this knight is going to c4 rook c7 and now Lila finally takes the knight on c5 but this position is uh, completely different than the one before because now there are two very important heavy pieces on d1 and d2 which allow pushing this pawn to d6 so for example after d takes on c5 d6 here is actually very very good and after the rook moves away the queen can go to d5 and white has ideas like bishop c4 and maintaining the black king also after bishop takes taking the bishop with the b pawn is not good because white has knight c4 attacking d6 and the a5 and also b6 is coming and the a5 pawn will most probably drop so after bishop takes on c5 stockfish is pretty much forced to take back with the rook but now lila plays rook c1 and she prepares to take back the c file stockfish now played f4 closing down the king side and lila is very happy she thinks now she's winning she evaluates the position at plus five the game continued with rook d1 bishop f8 bishop f1 this bishop is uh, staying better on f1 than on e2 if a black light square bishop would um, would ever leave this diagonal then uh, Lila could uh, go there with her own bishop and have a very very beautiful diagonal there attacking on c8 the game continued with rook a7 queen c2 the queen wants to go to b3 to guard b5 together with the bishop and then this knight could go to a4 and attack the black rook on c5 rook b7 queen b3 bishop e7 and now finally knight a4 attacking the rook and forcing it to exchange itself for the rook on c1 ignoring the threat on c5 doesn't work for example after something like bishop f8 and knight c5 black doesn't really have good ways to recapture the knight if d takes on c5 then d6 works again very very nicely and even though stockfish has two pieces attacking d6 and he could take there after queen d5 he would be in big trouble there's a lot of pressure down the d file the queen also attacks e5 and white has ideas like bishop c4 and knight c4 and white stands better alternatively taking with the b pawn again doesn't work because after a4 white prepares knight c4 and he would stand much better attacking a5 and d6 with a5 probably dropping very soon after b6 so after knight a4 stockfish was pretty much forced to exchange the rook and now after rook takes on c1 lila is preparing to enter with the rook to c6 the game continued with knight c7 rook c6 and taking the, that knight is completely impossible because after d takes on c5 the rook is attacked 
he has to move somewhere and then after queen f7 this queen wins down the house he will take on g6 we will take on h5 and white is white is winning so after rook c6 stockfish didn't take on c6 and because b6 is now attacked twice with the knight and the rook stockfish played knight a8 to defend b6 the game continued with knight c3 king g7 and now knight c4 lila is attacking now d6 twice and stockfish chose to defend d6 by moving the bishop to e8 and allowing this queen to see d6 but now lila has this chance of occupying that beautiful diagonal with this bishop and she is also threatening to trap the queen with rook c8 so stockfish played here rook b8 to prevent that and now queen d1 this queen stays much better on the d file he has ideas like maybe queen g1 and attacking b6 but the queen in general stays better on, on the d5 because after stockfish's next move knight c7 he could have maybe ideas like bishop takes on c6 and after d takes get in e5 now that the knight is defending the d5 square but with the queen on the d5 this is impossible lila continued now with a4 to defend the b5 square and it's important to note here that instead of a4 taking on b6 doesn't work because black has this very strong knight takes on b5 threatening this very nasty fork on c3 winning the queen so lila would need to take on b5 but this would drop the rook on b6 after rook takes knight takes and queen takes on b6 and also after knight c7 taking with the knight doesn't work same thing knight b5 forcing knight b5 and now stockfish could take on c6 pawn takes and now queen b6 and black is much better possibly even winning so after knight c7 lila played a4 and they continued with bishop f8 queen d3 king h7 and after a bit of shuffling we get to move 38 where after knight c1 stockfish allowed lila to enter with the rook to c8 by playing rook b7 and lila of course didn't think twice she went in to rook c8 the game continued with knight c7 queen c2 bishop f8 knight b3 king g8 and now queen c4 lila wants to take the pawn on a5 with the knight and then when stockfish recaptures you do the b pawn then play b6 attack and win this knight on c7 but after king g7 here lila didn't go for it she shuffled a bit more until move 58 where in this position now she's really threatening to take on a5 after something like bishop f8 there could come knight a5 b takes b6 knight a8 rook takes on a8 rook takes on b6 and this this position lila could even take the bishop on e8 because after the queen recaptures she would have queen c7 check winning the rook on b6 but after knight b3 stockfish was really cunning because he played now bishop f7 preventing knight takes on a5 if the knight takes now then after b takes on a5 and b6 this knight wouldn't be forced anymore to go to a8 he could take on d5 and after pawn takes and rook b6 lila would be in trouble here for example after something like rook c7 the queen could take the rook and after queen takes stockfish would have bishop d5 check and we can see how this rook and the two bishops place this king into a very uncomfortable position here the game could continue with knight c4 but now after rook c6 and queen a5 bishop c4 check and black is uh, winning or after rook b6 instead of rook c7 maybe white could play knight b5 but this also fails because of e4 and the threat of coming with the queen to e5 getting to this very strong diagonal is just too much to handle for white 
So after bishop f7, knight a5, not really working yet, Lila played first knight b1, and after bishop e8, she played knight c3, defending the pawn on d5 and making knight a5 a real threat. So Stockfish now defended the pawn on a5 with rook a7, but this allowed Lila's rook to get to b8 and attack b6. But after bishop f8, instead of taking the pawn, Lila played knight d3. And after a bit more shuffling, we get to this position where this bishop is on f8, the king is on h8, and Lila's king is on b2. And in this position, Lila finally decided to take the pawn on b6. And after queen d8 and rook c6, she threatens now to get in b6. So Stockfish played knight a8, rook c8, queen b6, but now Lila takes the bishop on e8. Rook c7, queen e2, and after queen a7, finally, the game was adjudicated in Lila's favor. This was, again, a very strong strategic game by Lila in which she didn't allow any kind of counterplay. Please subscribe, like and share, and check out some of the other games. Thanks for watching, and see you soon. Bye-bye.